माय नेम इज रत्नाकर श्रीवास्तव आई एम पास आउट फ्रॉम आई आई खड़गपुर इन 2006 एंड फ्रॉम लास्ट कपल ऑफ इयर्स आई वाज एक्टिवली वर्किंग विद बिग डेटा हडूप एनालिटिक्स बैकग्राउंड करेंटली आई एम ए बिग डेटा आर्किटेक्ट आई एम गोइंग टू प्रजेंट यू हाउ हडूप has made a big change in the market in the IT world in the field of analytics and other stuff so uh, so uh, let let me start by telling uh, what is big data so as market has risen what has happened in the IT world people start sharing a lot of data once we are getting huge and huge set of data and different variety of data so what has become what has come in picture that the data has become huge so we call that thing as a problem or that thing as a pro- problem we call that as a problem or we can also say that uh, this is the uh, this is a new world that is come in picture so this is called big data big data is like a huge set of data different variety of data and a huge set of data so big data has become a challenge in the current world because every in every 2 years data becomes three times it grows by 300% so now our old machines our old servers um, our space our processing speed everything was limited to a small set of data the data that comes in gbs or in some terabytes but we are yet not capable enough to handle petabytes of data gigabytes of data so but those data are coming and we have to handle them that is one problem but a new world that is coming is when petabytes or gigabyte of data we have our analytics results will become more and more accurate we can give different dimensions to our machine learning and analytics thought process so uh, uh, so that is one solution that has come up with big data so if i take you to the definition of a big data so what big data says big data is a data whose scale diversity and complexity requires new architecture techniques algorithms and analytics to manage it extract the value and hidden knowledge from it so what is the meaning big data is it's very simple term huge set of data earlier uh, when we are not using social networking like facebook our data is very limited but we all know that several billion people every time they are online on facebook every time there are mm, couple of millions likes in in every day there are like more than a billion likes and uh, there are lot several million shares per day so who will handle all this data are we ready for this earlier our databases like oracle db2 all these are not capable to handle this load and if they are able to handle this load they are not capable of processing these things so that's why this new thing has come in picture that is called hadoop hadoop is one of the solutions of big data there are other solutions also available like hana and there are other solutions but all of them are paid solutions companies looking for free solutions and the best free solution that is in the market is hadoop hadoop is a big umbrella that encapsulates a lot of things lots of thing all related to big data in to in solution of the big data thing at the at this point of time that's why hadoop is gaining a huge importance so uh, let's go into the discussion like to understand like what sort of data we receive in what format we receive and how hadoop handles it so uh, is there any question up till now no question sir okay let's move on so hadoop is a solution to big data so let's see what sort of so data we get so there are three v's what is the meaning of this v so this is a formal definition that is given by ibm that 
we can define uh, the big data that needs to be solved with Hadoop if using the three V's. The three V's are the volume, velocity and variety. So what is the meaning of volume in the case of big data? Volume means earlier we have very small set of data like, like we have uh, put an order, we can purchase that order. So this putting an order and, gener and purchasing that order is a small set of data. But after that we thought that okay fine we can do uh, we can purchase the things from different different channels we can purchase the things from web we can go to the stores and purchase we can um, uh, several times we do purchases directly using the um, SMSs and uh, uh, and other ways so our mode of purchasing the things have increased so and our data has also increased the processing has changed over a period of time the same Reebok shoes we can go and purchase from the store we can also go and purchase online we can go directly to the Reebok shoe and purchase it we can go through some other sites like mentra or other sites and purchase it we can go to third partners and purchase it so for the same Reebok shoes the way of purchasing has changed drastically and the medium of data has also changed if it is handling through third party our way of handling is different if it is coming through tv ads like uh, home shop or something our way of charging our way of processing is different so different different ways the data is coming and volume keeps on increasing because people are trying to think new business ideas and that is not all once Reebok has launched a shoe or a, it is planning to open a shoe store it will also think that which is the best area where I can open it. So it will see what all purchases are done on the Reebok shoes, what type of shoes and where the people have actually purchased. So it has to collect a huge, huge set of data like last 10 years data that will be in petabytes and then it will do an analysis on top of that. It run an analytics on top of that. What all shoes we have to make, which type of shoes people like, whether they like more of leather shoes or sports shoes. So all these analytics needs to be done. So the data as the business is growing people want to predict the things in advance and that's why the data is also increasing people want to process 10 years of data 20 years of data to get the exact results how what type of shoes where to open the store which sites we have to sell what type of things we need to sell all these things are changing the market so volume is huge huge and huge set of data for different different purpose so that's why that is the first V. So okay, fine. So if let let me go step by step. So the the first V was the volume. I have already explained that, but let's see some of the figures. So there is an expectation that the data will increase 44 times. That is 4,400 percent in next seven to eight years it was from 2009 to 2020 we are already in 2013 so several companies are still having more than several petabytes of data and they are processing it to get more and more accurate results there are several companies in the market you talk about ibm you can talk about intel you can talk about facebook twitter whatsapp mm, so there are lot in the finance world morgan stanley there are lots of companies who are already processing this amount of data so in the healthcare domain, companies keep on processing uh, these data to analyze the diseases, to analyze the correct way of identifying the diseases. So lot of experiments are going on. So volume is increasing like anything. And up till last several years, we are not ready for this. The only company who has huge volume of data in 2002 and 2004 was Google. Once Facebook has come into picture, social media has also come up with a huge set of data. So now every company is trying to uh, take out all last 10 years, 15 years of data and analyze for a, the business advancement. So, uh, so if you can read out through this slide, you will find that the data storage growth, you can see this thing uh, has gone to one, uh, one petabyte in, in millions of petabytes it has gone. So tweets per day, you can see that how many tweets in, in Twitter, you can see this graph, it is exponentially increasing. So, and every day it is generating data in several terabytes, in, ter in terabytes and after that for doing the analysis it will become in petabytes. 
so more the data better is the analysis but how to handle that data that data handling is done by hadoop so now let's go to the second slide complexity data is not coming in one format some data is coming in audio format some data is coming in video format some in coming in image format text format numerical format is streaming data youtube in youtube data comes in a stream format streaming data is coming i have to handle all these sort of data earlier we use one sort of data at one place like earlier we use only images at one place videos only at one place but now huge data is coming and at the same time i want to run the logic like if the text is coming like this if a person is asking to uh, to buy a uh, t-shirt of excel size this is a text data then i will show him 20 excel size t-shirts with images and also a video in which salman khan has uh, wear a l or excel size same sort of t-shirt and how it is looking so with with the same tool i want to run a logic on all the types of data who will handle it data is huge and the variety is different so uh, so how to handle it so hadoop has also come up with a solution with a full file system in which you can use n number of variety of data and you can analyze those things so uh, when I, i i remember i was working for a fashion site of us and uh, they have a requirement that they want uh, the uh, they want the pictures of the actors and the actresses based on as a recommendation based on the requirement of the people like if i say that i want to purchase a t-shirt my color is um, uh, blonde and uh, my hair color is this my eyes color are this and my size is this so they based on these text they write some text on the screen they generate a lot of recommendations that shows the photo of different different t-shirts and they also loads the videos related to that so at the same time based on your query they have to process three types of data and the data on their side is huge it's massive set of data so these are the sort type of analytics we have to do at the run time and we have to handle variety of data so this is was again a challenge that is and solved by hadoop now the third thing so there are two v's volume variety and now um, the third v that is the speed so earlier when if i clearly remember like the oracle cost of purchasing an oracle server database server is easily in few lakh dollar for a year and then for everything for license for everything you have to pay extra extra amount so it every year it is several lakh dollar for uh, you can easily assume it's like 2 million or 3 million dollar for a small set of company and every set of company not for a big company so they and they process the data in on speed only when the data is less than a billion row a table can handle up till 2010 table can handle an oracle table can handle not more than a billion row now the data that i am processing every day is 260 billion if i have to process 260 billion rows in oracle what i can do i have to load it unload it load it unload it the same process that earlier takes in oracle i have moved the data in for a healthcare company from oracle server to our hadoop earlier it was taking 23 to 26 hours for running an analytics query on oracle now in hadoop it takes uh, if my if my memory is correct it takes like 43 minutes to 48 minutes so this was the change that hadoop has bring in picture you can see that we do millions of updates every day we do likes we do share photos on facebook the things will get updated in less than a minute we open our profile we want to see our friends profile friends of friends profile things got uploaded in less than a minute in on facebook so how this has happened it uh, the speed has increased because of the horizontal scalability because the same process is run parallelly at thousands of places 
so the, uh, there are a lot of concepts in hadoop that has uh, helped us to achieve these things so speed of uh, the processing has become very good youtube in you see that the download speed of the video is pretty good online streaming is very good you do, don't use databases for storing their videos youtube don't uh, uses databases for most of the things apart from like the user collection and all those stuff it can use wikipedia don't use databases these are the huge set of data that on which you have to maintain the speed so you need servers and you need parallel process to run this is the core concept of hadoop like how we can reach to that level so um, let's see so there are some examples that are given like uh, uh, healthcare in healthcare domain uh, there are uh, several sensors are monitoring a patient that is in a very critical state and lot of data got generated if i put a patient on a icu bed or uh, then lot of data got generated into the different different monitors and we have to do the analytics in a less than a second time or you can say that 5 uh, to 10 seconds time so all that analytics can be done when we are uh, capable of handling different different sort of data and a huge set of data so both these things we want and the pulses are measured like in every millisecond so uh, huge data set got generated so and in the same the e promotions you can see that based on the current location you can purchase uh, your purchase history what you like recommendation engine how your actual recommendation engine work if i want to share there is a company called playa platform who was working on this so how it actually works is like in us if you are going through an area with your car at a speed of suppose that 80 miles per hour what happens that if you open your mobile a line will come at the down uh, that will say that uh, some some ad a small ad link if you click on that link in a span of 10 seconds it will search all the local restaurants or all the local malls shops everything and whatever you want to see food and all, it will do a bidding on top of that it, suppose that there are 100 food stores it do a bidding on top of that and and do an analytics which based on the ratings based on the price they are going to pay and pick the top three and show it on your screen in a matter of seconds it do all those things and for all the mobiles it's not for one mobile so for if you are going through the lanes of new york and you are crossing one area it will do all those things for all the mobiles in a matter of second because once you after five minutes once you cross that area it will show you different ads when you click on the same after five minutes again it will show you different ads so it should be in the relief of two to three kilometers so all these things um, needs the speed e-promotions so that you can go to the uh, right store things store, store things okay so so this is the uh, these are the sort of problems and these are the solutions that hadoop is bringing in picture so so, so some people say that it's not 3v <laughs> come people come in future and say that it can be 4v so there are four sort of data that we have to analyze data at rest data at rest means there's lot of data that we have previously like uh, healthcare industry like finance industry they said that i uh, like marketing industry i uh, coca cola says that i will collect, bring up all my last 15 years of data and want to do an analysis where to open the next shop so that i can get a maximum benefit people analysis what sort of people drink coca cola in which atmosphere in uh, warm weather or in cold weather or in extreme conditions when people usually drink coca cola what set of people use drink coca cola do actresses drink really drink coca cola or a middle man drink coca cola or a poor man drink coca cola so all these analysis you can get if you collect 15 years of data and do an analytics on top of that so data at rest is an important factor so most of the companies are doing this sort of analytics to predict the future of the business then the second thing comes data in motion data in motion very good example is youtube so the lot of data that is coming that we want don't want to store but we want to process it at a very high speed so streaming so uh, for that processing again we need some structure to handle big data and variety of data so data in motion then comes the uh, variety that is data in many forms 
like as i have already explained that the data is coming in too many forms to some of the sites like in facebook you can see that the data is coming in picture format in text format in video format all the three format it is coming and all the three formats are related if i am writing some text my picture my pic in uh, in dubai if i am writing like this then i have to i am putting a picture also of dubai so and uh, might be i can put a video so facebook should have the capacity to handle all the three sort of data and put it at the same place in the correct order so it makes sense to all my friends who is seeing my picture and there is a veracity so if if i talk about this data data in doubt so in the real world several times it happens that lot of data is coming and some data is inappropriate some data is incomplete still we have to make sense out of that still we have to make sense out of that suppose that if i am collecting the cancer patients data how cancer patients got treated in last 10 years i got several inappropriate data i got some correct data also so i have to make sense that which data i have to discard which data i have to put so uh, this sort of analysis can also be done on hadoop so Mm, harnessing Hadoop, this shows that you know, what was earlier. So OLTP was the um, operational database. On uh, it's a transaction protocol. So transaction protocol, if you guys know, is transaction should that's an atomic property that should either we have to do it or we cannot do it. Like if I'm putting, if I have gone to a bank and I want to deposit ten thousand in the bank, so either my transaction should succeed or my transaction should fail it should not happen like uh, 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 sir your money got added in the account but you didn't get the cash uh, or let me give you a better example i am putting a money in my um, i am withdrawing a money from my account and at the same time my brother is also trying to withdraw the money from my account so if both the transactions happen simultaneously without any transaction transaction means only one person can do a transaction at a point of time if both the people do the simultaneous suppose that there are thousand rupees and at the same point of time we reach there and we ha both have done the transaction of 300 300 rupees actually the amount should be shown as thousand minus 300 minus 300 that will be 400 but if if you don't put transaction, what will happen that uh, both the people are seeing 1000 rupees, I have drawn withdrawn 300, other person has withdrawn 300, but the data was not transaction proof, then what will happen? The Unfortunately, at some point of time, it will show 700, because data got copied at two places, and it was database, if database is not able to handle that transaction thing, uniqueness of the transaction, it might get corrupted, and it, it can show 700. So, that was a potential problem in in uh, in uh, like uh, late 70 in late 60s in early 70s that's why people have come up with all these relational databases at all this acid property concept and they have made transactional databases so these oracle db2 all these databases are the transactional databases they are not made with the purpose of analytics they are just made to support the transactions that's why they are slow but they provide a foolproof transaction mechanism people have not thought that we have a huge set of data in future and we have to come up with some new structure to handle that data so in future when people find the need that we have to do an analytics on the data what people start doing? People started using the same Oracle and DB2 data for doing the analytics. That's why the analytics process, they are able to do the analytics, but the analytics process was slow. I was uh, working on a project in Bombay Stock Exchange, BSC, and they are using Oracle for doing the analytics. Their process was so slow, they have some GB of data in uh, in like uh, they have 42 tables and they have some like 5.5 0.8 gb of data in different different tables and once they do a join and try to do some analytics from that data the process was so slow that it takes like eight hours to return the result for a query but we can definitely do that because analytics is anyways a background process it's not a real-time process so so it was so slow uh, people 
come to know that we have to do data warehousing we have to store all sort of data and we have to do an analytics on that not in the real time it's in the background way like if i want to do an analytics that where i can open my new shop of coca cola to get the maximum profit it it's, is not a real time thing i can do this analytics and take a two weeks or three weeks or months of time to do this analysis but it but using oracle it was really slow sometimes using oracle and db2 it was impossible to analyze that data because they support maximum billion row and i have like 800 billion rows of data in last 10 years how i will do the analysis that's a really a pain point then in future what happens that streaming data starts coming like in youtube my you want to listen a song it was coming from some server in the form of a stream and you have to handle that thing streaming data is a huge set of data that all of a sudden comes to you and you have to handle it so uh, that's a new set of thing that has come now people are saying okay now to how to handle it so way and the type of data that we are getting keeps on changing so still we are using all these three type of data and hadoop is not a solution for all these three type of data at this current phase hadoop is best for analytics hadoop at this current phase don't support transaction things Mm, they support analytics thing in the best best possible manner earlier and what analytics we are doing for 1 gb of data and it is taking like 3 hours with hadoop 1 gb of data will take like one less than a minute to process but it is not a good thing to use hadoop for a small set of data the best way the uh, there is a data classification when you should actually use hadoop so uh, streaming data also hadoop can handle very easily very easily so so these are the definitions online transaction processing online analytics processing that is used for data warehousing then the real time analytics and processing that is handled by the big data online analytics processing is also handled by big data it's very easily handled there are a lot of tools that was written saas that was earlier used so for doing the analytics Uh, so but now people have come with r that is a free version and mahut that is written in uh, technologies like java that can easily run on big data that is a distributed environment hadoop thing and and can do the analytics in a much 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 faster manner so so these are some of the pictures that will show you that i hope you guys already know who is generating big data so if i show you all the pictures facebook twitter all these things are generating huge set of data different different variety uh, twitter uses its data if suppose that uh, 1 lakh people have gone to watch a picture in 2 days and they have put their comments on twitter twitter uses those lines of data like if i say that i like this picture uh, this picture is a headache i don't like this hero i in this picture i don't like the acting of this ex hero in this picture it uses all those comments and do a sentiment analysis and generates the rating of the movie so all these analytics now has become more and more accurate because the data is huge and we are able to handle it using hadoop all these are the the prominent user of hadoop they are using hadoop day in day out for doing the analytics then who is generating the second such of huge data scientific instruments scientific instruments like uh, uh, like your climate thing if i ask that uh, if you every day you read in newspaper like uh, delhi got the lowest temperature in last 20 years who is who is actually doing this calculation a person is doing this calculation no every minute of the whole india data is stored in a database whole india and ev- with every latitude and longitude delhi this location this temperature every last 20 years of data for delhi for mumbai for bangalore for pune for calcutta for kharagpur for whatever state smallest city you can say sikkim manipal shimla masuri manali everywhere for every minute last 20 years data is stored and whenever a new temperature got stored it got compared against all that data 
all that data do you think we can do it in a database no never we can do so we have to move, move in some system where we can handle a huge set of data and all that comparison happens and the next day or after two hours we got a news in our television that this was the the most chilling day of Delhi the temperature has gone beyond minus half it was the lowest in last 15 years last 20 years in Delhi or it is lowest in all over India in last 25 years something like this so there's a lot of analysis that happens so data analysis for that comes from the scientific devices like uh, uh, weather, weather reporting system like uh, earthquake uh, reporting system like in which is a Richter scale and all those things that comes from the microscopes all all this is a huge set of data so then comes the uh, sensor technologies same way you can assume that the sensor technologies like um, I will give you one more example the one more example is uh, live example is like the aeroplane when an aeroplane takes off and it lands there's a black box that keeps uh, we keep in the uh, wing of the like the um, wing of the um, aeroplane that uh, that don't catch fire or no nothing happens to that so every thing that a pilot do every take off landing atmosphere every every minute and minute detail got recorded into that um, black box in an unstructured format that is used for analysis if the flight lands successfully what all commands are taken if in some case flight crashes that is again used as an analytics who was the actual culprit it's whether it's a technology or the pilot or the way of flying or the atmosphere all these things are taken picture so in a single flight we generate more than a TB of data 1 TB data, no database can accommodate in a single table. In a single flight, when you are moving from Mumbai to Delhi, it will take 2 hours. A 2 hours flight will generate at least 3 terabyte of data. You need at least 200 tables of Oracle to store that data. That single table data, you need 200 tables of Oracle that you cannot store. You need something to handle that and that is done by using big data thing, Hadoop thing. So Hadoop is not a new thing. Once it has become free, it has become popular. Earlier Google was using it with the name GFS, Google file system. Lot of companies are earlier using it with their own way. After that, Google has written a white paper that was implemented by Facebook and Yahoo and uh, and they have donated it to Apache. Now Apache is taking care with the help of Facebook, Yahoo and there are other companies like uh, Inmobi and Intel is now a strong participant, IBM is a very strong participant. All these are participating in that to make that structure more and more strong. Mobile devices, now let's move to mobile devices. Mobile, all of us know how many messages we send. Messages is a very big small thing let's talk about like once if i have a mobile i'm talking to my mm, some of my friend and i am moving in a car you can understand that the packet of data is jumping from one tower to another in much less than a second even less than a millisecond of time packet of data is jumping from one tower to another who will handle this sort of data and how much data it is is a huge set of data there are several people roaming on the roads and keep on talking huge set of data streaming data static data you want sms text new set of text every day are all over india all over world airtel is sending huge set of data and they have a common repository for those so who is handling all all those things if i have to handle all those things if i do, do an analytics on top of those things i need something where i can store these things and i can read those things i can identify i can make meaning from those things just storing is not a thing i have to make some meaningful thing out of that and that thing is done by the processing so there are two parts of hadoop one is the storage part one is the processing part so the processing part takes care of these things So the old model was uh, newspaper and all these things are generating data and the people are consuming it. 
news we read newspapers we have some television channels and other stuff new model is all of us are generating data we log in on facebook do a lot of chatting we write all our emotional things lot of ideas we use whatsapp we use, every day we go to banks we all are generating data and uh, companies are consuming it your facebook we uh, twitter tweets facebook ideas got indexed and now people know that okay i have whether i have to give a vote to congress or not using facebook using twitter they are indexing your data earlier companies generate data and we consume it data comes in the form of newspaper we read the news earlier data comes in the form of news we watch the news on the television and we said that, oh i got this knowledge now the situation is getting reversed we are saying that this is my view about congress this is my view about aam aadmi party now and you say 200 things like this you said that this is my view about uh, uh, chicken mutton masala so you keep on giving your views and those views got indexed in different different format obviously the view that you have given for the political thing don't get mixed up with chicken mutton masala right if congress want to analyze that uh, what is my view about uh, from the facebook and the data got corrupted and chicken mutton masala data comes in that what will happen it will get a wrong result it will get a data corruption so now all of us are generating data and we have to handle that data there are millions and millions of sources of generating data now earlier there was some sources and there are a lot of consumers so the model of data generation has become changed so what is the uh, uh, driving factor for hadoop why people are using hadoop in the market at this point of time it is not sun- supporting at this point of time the real time analysis or you can say that a transaction analysis but it best supports the analytics predictive analysis analytics data mining all that thing that was a dream because once we run our analytics query it takes several hours sometimes a day more than a day or two day to give the results now we do those things in minutes all the business intelligence analytics storage is easy we can provide variety of data and we get the results in minutes these are the if we get all these three things i will start using all my old data and try to generate some meaningful thing out of that i can merge my data from the logs and the table i can use an oracle table that will tell that this is my account user id this is my amount then this is this detail and i can use that transaction and i can use the logs also and i can use join those both the things in hadoop and generate some meaningful thing out of that so so predictive analytics com- complex statistical analytics very last set of the more of a real time it's not exactly real time it's more of a real time why it is more of a real time like you can see in facebook you cannot get the results in microseconds but the thing is that if you do a like within like 10 15 seconds you will get that update sometimes if you write a huge comment and uh, you share two three sort of data it might take like 40 seconds to uh, update that so it's not exactly real time but it is like uh, more of a real time because hadoop has made this processing very fast so again the same story challenges handling big data because data has become very big so our uh, earlier our uh, technology was not that great our way of storage was vertical not horizontal we want to purchase a single server that cost us like several million dollar now we want to purchase 200 small 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 machines conventional machines that cost us 100 dollars so uh, earlier we are focusing on vertical scalability now we are focusing on horizontal scalability so hadoop has come up with a horizontal scalability if i have the storage of 800 terabytes of data and in future my data has become 1000 terabytes i can easily add three more servers as this is a horizontal scalability without thinking that how my system will handle hadoop internally takes care of that but vertical scalability if i have the space of 100 terabytes of data i cannot 
go beyond 100 terabytes of data because I cannot I have to purchase a new server copy all this data or I have to do a lot of things so uh, so now big data landscape you can see that this is a good slide that you take you can see that who all company are using it who are company are helping in this or uh, so these are all the companies that are helping in this aggressively so some companies are working on different different parts of the data oracle also and ibm all the database companies uh, microsoft all are coming with their version of um, hadoop so oracle is aggressively working on that microsoft has already come up with that new version that is with the name hd insight microsoft has linked this new excel sheets with uh, hadoop uh, with the name hd insight but it cost like in microsoft everything in microsoft is paid nothing comes for free so it, it is heavy costing amazon has given us the ec2 server with hadoop support so you can name any big company you will find they are working on big data because future is big data you go here you, down you can see that amazon windows azure with the name info chips Oracle, SQL Server, IBM, DB2, everyone, everyone is trying to move out of this. So, all are using Hadoop technology, all are moving towards the Hadoop thing. So, Hadoop itself is given a database that is called the Edge Base, that is Hadoop database, but that is for a specific set of queries. If you want to do a lot of selects, less writes, you can use Edge Base. There is a separate sort of database query running thing. If you want to run exact queries that you are running on your database, and want to do the analytics in the same way you can use hive if you have a lot of unstructured data data is coming in the form of text videos you can use pig so so this is the hadoop technologies I, we cannot discuss it in such a short span of time but this is for different different things mahout is used for uh, mahout is used for uh, um, analytics uh, using Mahout, you can write your recommendation, clustering, classification things in like in like a day. In a day, you can code all these things and finish it off. It will give you a very nice recommendation engine. It will give you a very nice clustering algorithm setup. And that will run on this Hadoop thing. Directly run on this Hadoop thing and it can process several billions of records. MapReduce was the underlying technology. So, some companies directly write it. Some companies use Hive, Mahout, Matl, all these things to uh, generate map reduce things so this is uh, so there's a lot of you can read the names all these things are for doing the sentiment analysis so social media analysis bi analysis so this is all i have to share on hadoop so uh, the conclusive line i can say that uh, big data is a huge set of data and earlier we are not prepared for that and we don't need that earlier because some companies are generating the data and others are consuming it like Google was indexing all our data since 2000 so they need something to handle big data now all of us are generating data and we want uh, and we have to handle that that's why Hadoop has come in picture and now as we are able to store that data now we want to analyze that data also that's why Hadoop has given us MapReduce and top of that there are a lot of technologies we got that is used for analytics of huge set of data. So that's why Hadoop is gaining importance. If you read the lines that is given by the CEO of all the top notch companies like Google, Twitter, Netflix, Yahoo, they say that like we have given last decade to the technologies like SaaS, Java, Oracle this decade up till 2025 the full decade will be dedicated to big data and hadoop like technologies that um, is all I want uh, to ratnakar i am pratik from uh, iv so we've got a lot of yes. people in here uh, so uh, can we take some questions now um, yes uh, yes ratnakar? we can i'm i'm done with my slides yeah we can Hi, Ratnaka, this is Dehebraj. Uh, I am from IV actually. I have a question like, uh, how do we merge BI with Hadoop? Means, uh, how do you merge business yeah, with Hadoop? So, right. uh, 
uh, two ways are there. So we have go bit into the technology stuff. Uh, uh, to answer your question simply, either you can directly go and write your map reduce things that runs directly on Hadoop, and you can put all your BI logic there. Or there are tools existing in the market like uh, Hive, Mahout. You can use R also for doing the statical analytics of your business intelligence things. There are a lot of tools that has already come in the market and uh, that can do this uh, BI thing for you on, on top of Hadoop. So, uh, you know, I think uh, Ratnagar, if uh, probably it will be little helpful if you could just quickly uh, tell everyone here as to what are the important components of Hadoop. Say, for example, you know, most of the most of the people present okay. here understand, you know, what SQL is, what SAS is, what R is, what SPSS is. But say, for example, if you were to talk okay. about Hadoop, what are the important components? I heard that okay, Map Reduce is there, Hive is there. Okay, okay, is there. okay. But okay. Yeah. So the important, let me write it in an Excel sheet. So if I can tell you, there are Hadoop is mainly distributed in two parts. One is HDFS and second is MapReduce. So uh, we can't see, sorry Ratnagar, we can't see your Excel file. Can you, uh, if you can share your screen? Yes, 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 yes. So Hadoop is basically uh, basically distributed in uh, two parts. One is, uh, actually I have not added that slide, sorry for that, but uh, if I can write it here for you guys, or you can, Hadoop is is mostly distributed in two parts. One is the uh, HDFS, and the second is the MapReduce. Hadoop is written in Java, and HDFS is the storage part. If I try to write the definition for this, it is the storage. It takes care of the storage. Storage means like uh, how to store our files, different, different type of files, huge set of files. It's not one file, two file, several billion files, petabytes of data. It takes care how to make the storage easy, how we can write a data on the system, how we can read a data from the system. It takes care of that. This takes care of the logic part. If I say that, logic part. So. I have stored the Facebook data, like uh, 2 billion people profile on servers. Now, if I want to open my, uh, my profile accessing from a system, I have to write some logic that will say that sort all my friends records of last two hours and show it. So who will write this sorting logic of on top of my friend's record and show it on the screen for the Facebook. So I have to have some thing to write. So that logic is we write in MapReduce. That will take care of this thing to how to access different different systems because that data is scattered in like uh, uh, 2000 different servers. How to pick the data from 2000 servers, I have to write the logic. So MapReduce is a very important part, HDFS is the storage part, MapReduce is the logic running part. All the logic, whatever you can think, okay. likes, dislikes. So now, once this is the major classification, now, once we are able to do this classification, now people have come up with, I want to do business intelligence. Some people say that I was using Oracle, now my data got moved to Hadoop, now I want to run the same sort of select queries. Some people are saying that, I want to merge a table of Oracle and my logs that are generating generated on the server and want to draw some meaningful result out of that. Then people say that I will give you some components that will help you doing this because all of them are not from the pure technical development background. Different, different people are using it for different, different purpose. So the components that come in picture, I will write the name of those components. That one is Pig. I will explain these components to some extent. Hive. So 
there are lots lots and lots of them if i start writing this full sheet will uh, there is hue there is there is lots of components thrift hue there is lot of component so i will tell you some of the important components these are some of the very important components that always comes in context so pig as per my knowledge it is developed either by yahoo or uh, um, facebook so what is pig pig in the real world pig is a animal that can eat anything and digest it pig is an animal that can eat anything and digest it that's why pig has come in picture pig means in the context of hadoop it can digest any sort of data you give it structural data you get with unstructured data structural data is a data that comes in a table format like our oracle our databases uses structural data unstructured data is i got a text file that has some comma separated values some pipe separated values or i don't know what sort it is written so pig is a scripting language that can handle all the sort of data and internally generate a map reduce program and run that map reduce program on hdfs and give you the correct results hive is a thing that in which you can go and exactly write the queries in the way you are writing in your oracle with some exceptions definitely but in the exactly the select star from this table doing this this doing join like this and all those things so hive is it, it will again internally generate map reduce program and run on hdfs to pick the data hbase is the hadoop database that is more like a no sql databases if some of you guys know there are some no sql databases but it is a columnary database it is a column specific database in which things are sorted by row and they, it is a, it makes a column family so it, it it itself is a huge topic when to use hbase what is hbase so it is again a hadoop database its full form is hadoop database hive what is why the name hive hive oracle databases or db2 databases are structured tables are structured their data is stored in metadata files then there are sev several other their schema is stored in some other file system file then their row counts and all those things are stored in metadata file and there are then there are user specific table that holds the actual data that's why it is a structured thing so the same structure is maintained in hive that's why hive is what hive is the b hive so there are bees that makes a hive so if you see the hive it is a structured there are lot of hexagons that are there that makes a hive so it is a very structured thing in which they collect the honey honey so that's why the name hive is given so we are making a huge huge structure by making small small hexagons and it's so close and so impact that we can store any sort of data inside that that is a honey so that's why name hive is given scoop scoop is a tool for moving the data from oracle or different different databases to hdfs they we need tools to move the database from oracle from uh, from db2 to hdfs so scoop is prominently used for that purpose flume is for moving the databases from the web servers websites uh, i want to say that that uh, what all websites is planning to buy reebok shoes so i if suppose that 300 sites have connected them with uh, the reebok shoe so reebok shoe store wants to know that which all all the sites from where i can sell my shoes or which all all the sites who are accessing my product and in what ratio they are selling it so i want the data from all those sites on the reebok server so flume is used for that purpose zookeeper zookeeper is like you can say that uh, if uh, different different sort of data is coming there are 2000 3000 odd servers there are 2000 3000 odd servers and we want to do security on top of that i want to uh, uh, manage the authentication authorization of those servers i want to say that uh, these all servers can be used for this specific purpose so all these things can be handled using zookeeper there are lots and lots of components that are given there is some component called hue so i will not explain these things because it will take a lot of time there is something called avro so there is something called thrift so 
I know 10-15 components and I worked on 10-15 components. But the thing is that if you really see the component list of Hadoop, it has more than 150 components. Something for use doing BI, something for doing uh, data analysis, something for doing a specific sort of analytics. You got different different R, a very important thing R. So where does R fit into the picture here? R fit into the picture like if you want to do a statical analysis, you want to do a, a what uh, regression uh, on a huge set of data. So uh, noise I'm getting. We can so I'm getting bike noise. <laughs> so anyways, so uh, if I want to do a, a, a regression, uh, or want to run a regression on a huge set of data, we can easily write that thing in SAS or in Octave, uh, all those things. But the thing is that R intern, but they don't generate map reduce program. Indranil, can you uh, switch off your mic, please? Indranil. So they uh, they don't support distributed system. Now R write the same logic for the distributed system. So some of the logics. I'm not saying that R is hundred uh, percent. Uh, it can hundred percent run all its logic on HDFS because for that it has to write MapReduce program. But eighty percent of the uh, logic that we use regression analysis, mean, median, mode, all these and things are written in the map reduce format to run on distributed system that's why r fits into the picture okay all right good very nice uh, one more question i wanted to ask for everyone here so you see all these people have a very non technical most of these people have a very non technical background you know so a lot of people come from uh, msc eco math stats mm -hmm. uh, background or mba background or general engineering background so for them uh, what is the business case for learning uh, uh, Hadoop. I mean, you know, they understand that you know why it is important to learn SQL and SAS. But what is the business case of learning Hadoop, and what are the important components that they should focus? Because there are a lot of these components that you have spoken about. Yes. So, uh, if if I have to put it, uh, let me explain in like uh, first one or two minutes that Hadoop is an is not a, a small software. If someone says that Hadoop is a software, I don't accept it. I say that Hadoop is an umbrella that encapsulates a lot of things. So if if you uh, talk about uh, what all things you have to pick, if I start from the beginning, someone has come, gathered the requirement, then technology people have developed the product, then uh, people start using it. Again, we got a lot of data and we want to analyze that data to modify our product or to generate a new product. So this full life cycle, we can encapsulate in Hadoop. So the people who are from the admin background, IT admin and all those things, they work on HDFS. People who are from a pure technology background, they learn map reducing more. The people who are from the business analysis background, business analytics, MBAs, they learn pig hive and they learn pig hive and then there's a lot of uh, 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 R, Mahut, all these things they use. There is something called Mahut. So I'm not able to. So they use all these things. Mahut. So uh, so they use all these things. These are the analytics tools. So people who are actually want to do analytics, they have to use Mahut, R, and all those things. People who are more interested in the database things, they have to learn Hive, Pig, HBase. So uh, for the people who are from mostly from the mathematics the background and they do statical analytics, they can use R and Mahout. So there are different and people who want to, who are more interested in ETL sort of tools, movement of the data. I want to move a huge set of data from this place to this place. What should be the data format? They can use Avro, they can use the different connections with the different server thrift and all those things and moving the data from scoop. They can learn these things. So Hadoop is for everyone. If you ask me specifically, if a person says that my interest is in analytics, I will say that learn R and Mahout and Hive. If you say that I am more interested in database, I will say that learn Pig and Hive. If you say that I I don't know anything, I just want to um, configure the servers and all those, I will say that learn HDFS and uh, Avro and Thrift, all those things. So, okay. so right, I, I, am, I, am I answered your question? Yeah, yeah, very, uh, very quickly. Thank you. Very nice. Uh,